Welcome to Esoteric Thoughts. Today we have a special guest, Micah Dank. Hi, Micah. Hello. <laughs> Today, Micah is going to be talking to us about my favorite topic and a topic that I premiere on the channel very frequently, astrotheology. So, Micah, could you just give us a quick introduction as to who you are? Yeah. So I'm just a regular guy from Long Island, New York. I, uh, eight, nine years ago, nine years ago, I, uh, I moved to Boston for a new job and, uh, the iPad had just come out and I basically started getting into esoteric sciences and going down rabbit holes. And then someone sent me a video of Santos Bonacci and it completely blew my mind. It was like, it was like, like blew my mind. And I realized that I wanted to learn it. I wanted to teach it. I wanted to write about it. I wanted to do everything. So I spent the next few years just eating up all the videos of him, of Jordan Maxwell, this, that, and the other thing. And um, I started doing my own decoding based on the ciphers that um, were given and that I've elaborated on and come up with. And then I really found that I had something as I started going through all these ancient texts. So I started doing podcasts and uh, I started sharing this information. And uh, I also started writing a book series because I wanted to spread this to the masses. And the best way you can do that is to write a fiction book series. So that's what I did, where the characters basically discover all the stuff that I discovered. You know, it's very loosely based on me, but uh, it's very Dan Brown thrillers, Da Vinci Code type stuff. And the books have been doing well. And um, everything has just been going good. And, and this is basically what I teach now. I, I, uh, I, I started by studying Jordan Maxwell and Santos Bonacci. And now uh, I talk to Jordan on the regular. And uh, I'm doing a podcast with Santos next Saturday because uh, I teach at his esoteric school. So that's basically where it is. And I'm just basically uh, getting a lot of people on board with this work. And you, and you said that you, you've written a few books. Can you briefly talk to us about those books? Um, yeah. So I've written, I've written, I have six out so far. I have a publishing deal. That took a while to get. But you gotta you gotta be gritty with it. You gotta you gotta work hard for it. Um, eventually, I got an agent after a few years, and then a few years after that, I got a book deal. It went from one book to three books to six books, now to eight books. My seventh book is with the publisher. My eighth book, I'm starting to write, and I'm starting to like start starting to very vaguely figure out what I'm gonna do with the ninth book. So I don't know if I'm gonna stop this anytime soon. But it's basically all forbidden information, forbidden knowledge. So kicking off actually what you're going to uh, present, can you take us through your, your presentation? So I start by saying, employ your time in improving yourself by other men's writings so that you shall come easily by what others have labored hard for. That's what I'm doing. I've been studying this for 10 years. Some of you are somewhat new to this. Some, some of you are somewhat old, but don't uh, know it as in depth as I do. Uh, so basically, and that's not to say that you don't know it. That's just to say that you don't know my side of it. So um, basically, that's that's what you do is you so people spend their whole lives working and then you benefit, you reap the benefits. So you come easy to what they labored hard for. Now, the Bible, the scriptures are metaphysical, astrological, which I go over, anatomical, alchemical, spiritual, esoteric and mythology. They are not literal historical reality, and they're not even original, to be honest with you. Now, this is astrotheology in the Bible. This is the zodiac wheel at the bottom. Astrotheology is the meta is the metaphors and the stories surrounding the zodiac. <clears throat> Capricorn at the bottom, Cancer on top. This is how the wheel is supposed to look. Okay, goes back to the Lascaux Caves forty thousand years ago. Now, forty thousand years ago. Um, as you see here, world's oldest cave paintings show complete astronomy understanding 40,000 years ago. They say the Lascaux Caves paintings are 17,000 years ago. But 40,000 years ago, they, they understood this, okay? What happened were there were some teenagers that went in to a cave, much like uh, that young child went into the cave 
uh, to find the Dead Sea Scrolls, they went to the back of the Lascaux Caves. When they went back there, they saw things like this. Okay, so you have the many faces of the bull on the top. You have the many faces of the lion on the right. And you have the horse on the bottom. Now, they figured out very quickly that in astrology, the bull is Taurus, the lion is Leo, and the horse is Sagittarius. Okay, it's just missing the rider with the bow and the arrow. They carbon dated the wall, and it came out to 40,000 years, plus or minus 5,000 years. Now, for young Earth creationists who argue that carbon dating is inaccurate, they're half true. It, it is half true, to be honest with you, it's half true. But it's accurate up to 50,000 years. Okay, after 50,000 years, when you start to get to the hundreds of thousands of years and the millions of years, you got to go to your uranium typing. Um, there's different carbon ones that you have to use, but carbon 14 basic is good up to 50,000 years. So this is 40,000 years. They brought in a scientist. Uh, they brought in a scientist. They brought in an astronomer and an astrologer. And what they did was with a computer that they have it now, they were around the sky, the sky back 40,000 years. They printed out what they had, they superimposed it onto the wall, and lo and behold, the constellations all matched up where they were etched onto the wall. Not only that, but on June 21st, the summer solstice, and only on the summer solstice, light came back, came through the cave, okay, when the sun was at its height, at 12 o'clock, light went through the cave and bounced off the back wall, just that one day. Okay, so they had a pretty heavy knowledge of this stuff. There's questions you can ask in the Bible that don't really make sense. Okay, they're how Jesus was able to heal the blind, how he walked on water, how he turned water into wine, why he had 12 disciples, why he was betrayed with a kiss by Judas, why he was dead for three days, why is his birthday on December 25th. All this could be explained with astrology and is astrology. Genesis 1.14, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be signs to mark the seasons, days, and the years. That's what it is. The lights are the zodiac, and they mark the seasons, the days, and the years. That's what the Bible basically is. First sign is Aquarius. We're going to go over the 12 signs now. The first sign, and the first sign in astrology is actually Aries, okay? Uh, but I talk about Aquarius because it's January. It's like our beginning of our new year. Uh, and the other thing, too, is that, um, so let me get into that real quick, uh, which is represented by the man with the water pitcher. So the key words you need to look for, son of man, because this is the sign of the man, so the son of the man, a man, baptism, because this is how you baptize someone, or how a priest does, water pitcher, fountain, stream, river, pond, lake, creek, water things, water bodies, that's Aquarius because it has the water in the sign. Aquarius is actually an air sign in uh, astrology, okay? But because there's water in it, it can be used to reference water. Now, all these examples of water that I've just given you apply for Pisces too. Pisces is the mutable fish sign in the water, okay? So the first two are water. You have to figure out which ones they're talking about at times, okay? Which you can do by finding the connecting or opposing sign, which I'm gonna show you. Aries is the ram, and in Aries you have March 21st, which is the spring equinox. It's a 12 hour day, 12 hour night. It's also the Passover. So the Passover in astrotheology is when the sun passes over the equator on March 21st, and back on its way to its height in the summer solstice. In Judaism, the Passover is when the angel of death passes over Egypt. Anyone that doesn't have the lamb or the ram, right? The ram, Aries, the ram's blood on the door. Uh, the firstborn sons get killed. In Christianity, the passing over is changed and it's called the resurrection of God's son. Okay. So you have the Passover, the Passover and Easter all happen in Aries, all mean the same thing. So whenever you hear ram, lamb, shepherd, ram's horn, they're talking about Aries. <laughs> Taurus is the bull. When you look at the sky and you see Taurus during the season where it's supposed to be, you know that you need to put the plow on the bull so that you can plant the seed so you can harvest in Virgo and Libra. So whenever you hear bull, ox, calf, or cow, cow being a female bull, you're talking about Taurus. Gemini is the twins. It's Castor and Pollux Troy, whose sister was Helen of Troy. It's the story of Achilles. So whenever you hear twins or brothers, you're talking about Gemini. Then cancer is the crab, and it's the sideways moving creature. 
So we don't move side to side unless it's a sports drill. That's not how we walk. We walk like this or like this. We don't walk like this, but the crab does. We walk sideways. The sun walks sideways in Cancer. The sun rises a degree starting on December 25th. On the 26th, it rises an additional degree, an additional degree. Every single day, it rises another degree. So the days get longer, the nights get shorter. When it hits this June 21st, that's the summer solstice. That's the longest day of the year, the shortest night of the year. Then what it does is it stops at that height, stays at that height for three days, and then drops a degree on June 25th. And then it drops another degree, another degree, another degree. The days get shorter, the nights get longer. Does the same thing when it hits December 21st, which we'll get into. It stops and then it walks sideways for three days and then it comes back to life on December 25th. That's why all the gods are born on December 25th. Okay, because the sun, okay, is dead December 21st. It's the winter solstice. It doesn't rise above the horizon. The ancients would look at it and go, oh, the sun is dead. And then it would walk sideways for three days. So that's how you get God's son being dead for three days. Okay. And then what happens is on December 25th, it rises a degree again. It comes back to life. God's son, the only begotten son, the light of the world, the light, the sun, the light of the world comes back to life. Okay. So the crab in the ancient Egyptian time was known as the scarab. So whenever you hear crab or beetle, they're talking about cancer. Then Leo is the king. He's the lion. He's the king of the jungle. The ruling planet of Leo is actually the sun. So whenever you hear lion, lioness, or cub, you're talking about Leo. Virgo is the woman holding the wheat stalk. So remember before when you said that you plant in Taurus, well, the virgins would cultivate the wheat in Virgo in order to make the bread for the year. So whenever you hear virgin, wheat, grain, seed, barley, corn, grainy things, things that you harvest, that's Virgo. Libra is the justice, the scales, the balance, the just one. The reason it's the justice is because it judges God's son as it passes over the fall equinox. So remember in spring, you have uh, the resurrection, you have Easter, and you have uh, Passover. It's celebrated when it crosses over the midline. But here it's being mourned because it's going to drop down and it's going to be betrayed and it's going to be killed. Okay, so the Jews always celebrate the new year on the fall equinox. Libra is also wine season which when you plant for grapes in Taurus, you could press the wine here. It's also olive oil season. So whenever you have olives, you press them in Libra to make the oil. So whenever you hear law, judge, justice, the just one, divorce, marriage, court, wine, vineyard, wine press, grapes, olive oil or olives or oil, you're talking about Libra. Scorpio is the scorpion. I just previously mentioned the betrayer. He is the betrayer. When a scorpion bites you, it leaves an imprint in your skin that looks like two lips. It's why the mafia has the kiss of death. That's where that comes from. It's also why Jesus was betrayed by Judas with a kiss. So the sun is judged in Libra and is betrayed in Scorpio. Finally, in Sagittarius, this is where the man with the bow and the arrow shoot the sun and inflict further punishment on the sun, effectively killing it. The death is, June, is December 21st. It's the last day of Sagittarius. Whenever you're, you're hearing about death in the Bible, they're metaphorically referring to this date, okay? So whenever you hear horse, bow and arrow, spear or horseman, you're talking about Sagittarius. And then finally, you have Capricorn, who's the goat. The goat climbs the mountain. Now, if you look at the zodiac wheel on the right, Capricorn's at the bottom. So if you were to put a sun on the zodiac wheel, climbing a degree a day alongside the wheel, on its way back to its height in Cancer, in the summer solstice, it starts to climb in Capricorn. It starts to climb up the mountain. It's just a very encoded metaphor. Okay. So those be the 13 or the 12 signs. There's two versions of the eagle. You have Aquila, right? Uh, and you also have uh, Scorpio. I was going to get into this a little bit later, but we could talk about it now. <clears throat> Scorpio is the belly crawling creature. It's, uh, it's forced to crawl on its belly. It's considered the lowest form of life on earth. If you think about the uh, story about <clears throat> Adam and Eve and the snake, right? The snake is forced to crawl on his belly as a punishment. So crawling on your belly is the lowest form of life on earth. The eagle, however, is the highest flying form of life on earth. So in astrology, and you can look this up, Scorpio evolves into the eagle. And then it evolves one more time in astrology into the phoenix, 
what is the story of the phoenix the phoenix is a story about jesus it's about the sun it's jesus okay. yes the phoenix is it's a flaming ball just like the sun that dies just like it dies on december 21st and then it's reborn just like it's reborn on december 25th there's names for jesus there's names for jesus in the bible or not in the bible in church he's given nicknames okay the su- hold on when the sun is in Capricorn, the goat, he's called the scapegoat of Israel. When the sun is in Aquarius, the man sign, he's called the son of man. When the sun is in Pisces, he's the fisherman of men. It's also with Pisces, the two fish, why he feeds the masses with two fish. He's known as the lamb of God or the ram in Aries. He's the lion of Judah, also known as Leo, the lady holding the stalk of wheat, Virgo. He's born of a virgin and he's called the bread of life. Libra is the scales of justice. He's known as the just one. He's betrayed in Scorpio. He dies in Sagittarius, and it's why he's worshipped on the Sunday. Now, look at this picture that I pulled from the internet of Jesus. I'm going to draw your attention to a couple things. The sun behind his head, the white face, that typical stereotypical face of Jesus, the two fingers up like this, the heart on the outside, and the... uh, the uh, uh, crown of thorns around the heart. The sun is always behind Jesus because he represents the sun. Any picture of Jesus, if you look it up on Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever you want to search, the sun is behind his head. Even as a baby, the sun is behind his head because he represents the sun. Sometimes there's a Celtic cross in it. The two fingers up are an ancient comedic peace sign. This is an ancient peace sign. This is a John Lennon, Winston Churchill, V for victory, British war sign. Okay, this is the ancient peace sign. So whenever you see Jesus doing this, whenever you see Baphomet doing this, whenever you see Lucifer doing this, paintings of all these characters doing this, they're telling you they're peaceful. Okay, believe it or not. Now, the white Jesus picture is actually a guy named Caesar Borgia, who was the bastard son of Pope Alexander VI. So Pope Alexander VI, Rodrigo Borgia, bought his way to the papacy in the 1500s. And what he did was he made his bastard son, because popes used to have kids, they just never got married. Um, He made his son the face of. Now, 80 years before his reign, the printing press came out. So they made it real easy for them to be able to uh, ship this image off. Okay? The crown of thorns wrapped around the heart on the outside, and the heart is always on the outside of the body, if you ever see pictures of Jesus, represents the rays of the sun. The heart outside the body represents the toroidal field of the Taurus field, which looks like this. It's an electromagnetic field of the heart. Okay? It looks like an apple with you being in the core. It goes around six feet. It extends six feet around you. This is why the elites try and keep you six feet away during the pandemic. Okay? Because they don't want you interacting with anyone else. When you are interacting with someone else, it looks like this. These are your fields merging. That's why when someone comes up behind you, you know they're there. You always know they're there. You, you, they come up behind you, you know they're there because they broke your toroidal field. They're not, you're not a wizard. You're not a magician. You just know that. The guy on the left is a picture of Jesus. The guy on the right is Caesar Borgia. This is one of the early depictions of him. Okay, so you can clearly see where he gets his features from. Now, this isn't the greatest picture of Caesar Borgia, but it's one of the most common ones. But it absolutely is the face of. Now, we can start going into decoding some phrases. Now, Esso, if I were to ask you, do you know what the phrase pride comes before the fall means? They'd basically say that um, your pride will be your downfall. Mm -hmm. That's what it basically says. However, a group of lions is also called a pride, right? A group of lions is called a pride. Pride is the lion. The lion is Leo. Leo is in July and August. That comes before the fall. Okay, so it's just telling you about the cycles in the sky. Just telling you about the seasons. Now, in the book of Micah, which is my namesake, Micah 5.2, he predicts that the Savior will come from a town called Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you're small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. However, in Hebrew, Bethlehem is a combination of two words. It's bet, which means house, and lechem, which means bread. So the house of bread. Each zodiac sign is called a house, 
Well, I told you the lady with the wheat stalk, that's the house of bread. That's Virgo. Okay. So what he's really saying is the savior will come from Bethlehem. The savior will come from the house of Virgo. The savior will come from a virgin. Okay. Now I'm going to go into Deuteronomy 32, which is, I've highlighted all the signs in it. Remember the keywords that I've given you at the start of this. I've given you keywords so that we can decode this. I've highlighted them. There's eight signs, and then I'm going to give you two more in this one passage. There's eight signs. Okay. He gave them honey from the cliffs and olive oil from the rocky grounds. He gave his people butter from the herd and milk from the flock. He gave his people, he gave them lambs and goats. They had the best rams from Bashan and the finest wheat. They drank the best wine made from the juice of red grapes. But Jeshurun became fat and kicked like a bull. So the olive oil, I've told you, is Libra. That's when you press the olives. The lambs, that's Aries. The goat is Capricorn. The ram is Aries. The wheat, the lady with the Vir Virgo with the wheat stalk, that's Virgo. The wine and the red grapes, that's Libra. But Jeshurun became fat and kicked like a bull. That's Taurus, the bull. There's eight signs there. There's two more. He gave them honey from the cliffs. The cliffs, the high point. The highest point of the zodiac is Cancer. In yeah, Cancer, there's a group of stars, the beehive cluster, correct? And that's where the honey comes from. And then milk from the flock. Well, the milk comes from the Milky Way galaxy. And it's been called the Milky Way galaxy all the way back to the Egyptian Book of the Dead that I could find. And probably way before then, too. Okay, so the milk is the Milky Way galaxy. The center of the Milky Way galaxy is in Sagittarius. So from Cancer to Sagittarius is your land of milk and honey. It's not a place on Earth. Okay, it's the heavens. That's what they're talking about. Now, the Mount of Olives, I'm going to show you how we can actually decode this. Okay. So Jesus led his disciples to the Mount of Olives after his last Passover, so he could teach them a few more things, pray, then wait for Judas to betray him. While walking to the Mount of Olives, he gave the parable of the true vine. So Passover takes place in Aries, as I've mentioned, right? Okay, so look at, this, look at the zodiac wheel. That's Aries on the left. Well, right after that, he walks to the Mount of Olives. Well, I've told you that olives are Libra. So you go from Aries to Libra. You go across the zodiac. Those are known as cross signs. Okay. Once they're in Libra, they're waiting for Judas to betray him. Well, the betrayal is Scorpio, the betrayer. That's the next sign over. So they're waiting for that. So it goes from Aries to Libra. That's opposing signs, connecting sign. While in Libra, he gives the parable of the true vine or vineyard or wine press or grapes or, or, or it has to do with, with uh, wine, the vines. So he's still in Libra and he's talking about that. So does that make sense how that's because that's how we're going to be decoding things. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, and the way you've laid it out is actually quite logical when you read the actual text and follow, follow the diagram here. Correct. Yes, the Zodiac. Genesis 1, 7. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. I've mentioned this before, but I haven't mentioned it yet here. The firmament is not a dome over a flat earth. The firmament is actually the dividing lines between sides. In Genesis, it says the firmament shows God's handiwork. What it is, is it's a handover. These are, some people call them cusps. Some people call them handover dates. It's what it's, it protects one sign from spilling over into another one. So the heavens are not just a mess. Okay. Now the firmament is the dividing lines between the zodiac signs. The two waters, as I mentioned, are Aquarius and Pisces. The water under the firmament is Aquarius, or I'm sorry, I have it backwards. The now I have it the right way. This is just a mirrored image. The water, the, the waters under the firmament are Aquarius, and the ones above are Pisces, and there's the dividing line, there's the firmament between them. Revelation 4 7. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third had a face like a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. The first living creature was like a leaf. Lion, Leo. The second was like an ox, Taurus. The third had a face like a man, Aquarius. The fourth was like a flying eagle. In astrology, the Scorpio scorpion is the belly crawling creature. 
Okay, it's the lowest form of life on earth. We went over this before, you know, but um, what it is, is it evolves into the eagle, which is the highest flying form of life on earth. So when you're talking about this, you're basically talking about um, eagle being Scorpio. So Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio are the four fixed signs of the Zodiac. There's fixed signs, there's mutable signs, there's cardinal signs. The reason they're called fixed is because they're fixed in their season. So Leo is the summer, Taurus is the spring, Aquarius is the winter, the eagle, Scorpio, is the fall. Okay, it's in the middle of all of them. Now watch this. Remember how I was telling you about opposing signs and connecting signs to make patterns? Lion, Leo, man, Aquarius, opposing signs. Ox, Taurus, Eagle, Scorpio, opposing signs. It makes an X through the zodiac wheel. It's a clear pattern. This is how this is supposed to be read. Okay, it's not supposed to be taken literally. There's not going to be a four-headed monster in the sky coming for you. Revelation 12, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. There's a lot of people in the religious community that think there's going to be a dragon in the sky. Well, there kind of is. A woman clothed with the sun is the sun clothed in Virgo. It's just a metaphor. If the sun is in Virgo, the moon will be at her feet. So there's 12 sides of the zodiac. There's a 24-hour a day clock. So the, zodi so the sun spends two hours a day in each sign. If it does that, which is just simple math, the sun in Virgo is between 4 and 6 p.m. when the sun's still out. If the sun's up, the moon is at her feet. If the moon is at her feet, the sun is up. If the moon is up, the sun is at her feet. Okay, then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous dragon. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. The constellation Draco, which is on the left, is the dragon. Its tail goes from Aries to Sagittarius, which is four twelfths of the signs or one third of the stars out of the sky. This is how they're supposed to be read. Okay, this is all astrotheology. Behold, Matthew 10, 6, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. The sheep are Aries, and the wolf is the constellation Lupus, which borders the Libra line. Those are opposing signs. So I've given examples of astrotheology in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. I've been accused of cherry-picking verses from the Bible to prove a point. So let's take a much longer passage and see if we can decode it as well. This comes to the story of the book of Job. The book of Job is a story about a righteous man who has land, he has family, he has money, he has animals, and he's very pious. But Satan goes to God and says, if you take away his stuff, he won't, he won't worship you anymore. So God takes the bet and he says, you can do what you want to him, but you can't take his life. So eventually he starts losing his things. He never curses God out. He never abandons God, but he cries out to him. And what God does is he speaks to Job after Job's like sitting on a rock crying out to him. God speaks to him. I'm going to read you what God says. The first sentence is what God says. The second sentence is, is what it actually means in astrology. Can you lead forth, Job 38, 32, can you lead forth the Maseroth? The Maseroth is the Zodiac. Maseroth over time becomes Mazalot, which survives in Judaism today as Mazel Tov which literally means good fortune from the stars. So the Lord's challenge to Job, he says, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Well, those are obvious star metaphors. They're just out there in the open. Then he says, can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead out the bear with its cubs? The constellations are the zodiac above and the bear and its cubs are Ursa Major, the great bear, and Ursa Minor, part of the Big Dipper. Then he says, who could tip over to the water jars of heaven? So that's, that's clearly Aquarius. Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger for the lions? That's Leo. Who provides food for the raven? That's the constellation Corvus, which means raven and borders on Virgo. Do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? Mriga, meaning deer, is located in Orion. Who let the wild donkey go free? That's a Celis borealis, meaning donkey, and is located in Cancer. 
Will the wild ox consent to serve you? That's Taurus. The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully. That's Lambda Achille or Al Thaliman, which means two ostriches in Arabic. Do you see where I'm going with this, Esau? Oh, yeah, I can follow this. This is, yes. <laughs> Do you give the horse its strength? It laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. It does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles against its side along with the flashing spear and lance. Well, the quiver is for the bow, is for the arrows. That's Sagittarius with the bow and the arrow. Does the eagle soar at your command and build its nest on high? That's Aquila, which is a Latin name for eagle and is a constellation a few degrees above the celestial equator. Finally, he says, can you pull in Leviathan with a fish hook? Leviathan, anybody that knows history, was a fish god that was uh, venerated, that was uh, worshipped. That's Pisces. Okay. Psalm 104. He sends forth springs in their valleys. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and wine, which makes man's heart glad so that he may make his face glisten with oil. The high mountains are for the wild goats. He made the moon for the seasons. The sun knows its place in its setting. The young lions roar after their prey. The springs are Aquarius. The wild donkeys are a Celis Borealis, which is in Cancer. The cattle is Taurus the bull. The wine is Libra. The oil is Libra. The wild goats are Capricorn. The moon for the seasons and the sun knows the place of its setting is openly talking about the sun and the moon. The lions roar after their prey or Leo. Let's keep with Psalms. Psalm 147. He gives to the beast its food and to the young ravens which cry. He does not, he, he does not delight in the strength of the horse. He does not take pleasure in the legs of the man. He makes peace in your borders. He satisfies you with the finest of the wheat. He gives, he gives snow like wool. So ravens are the constellation Corvus. The horse is Sagittarius. The man is Aquarius. The wheat is Virgo. And the wool from the sheep is Aries. Answers to the questions at the beginning. How Jesus was able to heal the blind. Now, Jesus, the S-U-N of God, the son Okay, well, I mean, the S-O-N of God, the man came up to him, he touched him in his eyes, right? He touched him in his eyes, and then he was able to see. but the sun does the same thing too. Right now, the light is out, so we can see, we have the gift of sight. But when the sun goes down, everything gets dark, we can't see anymore. Okay, so it heals the blind in the morning when the sun rises. How we walked on water, it's the same thing when you uh, see a sun set on a lake, the or a body of water. The water. Yeah, yeah. That's how he walks on water. Also, the interesting thing, too, is if, you, if you're if you on a beach and the sun is walking on the water and you start to walk in a direction, it'll follow you. Okay? Now, how he turned water into wine. So the reason God is considered a man and Mother Earth is considered a woman forever, that's the dynamics that have always been, it has to do with one thing, and it's the sacred rain. Okay? In Hebrew, the word for rain is shemen. We get the word semen from it. It's the sacred fluid. Because what happens is God's sacred fluid literally comes down onto earth. And then from her body, from the water, fruits, plants, vegetation grow, grass grows. It comes to life. Everything is burst from her body. Okay. So April showers bring May flowers. You plant in Taurus. And April showers bring May flowers. Everyone knows that limerick or whatever it's called, that little rhyme. And then what happens is it rains and it rains and it rains. And then the plant grows. And then in Libra, you get to pull the grapes off and make wine. That's how you turn water into wine. It's a process. Okay. Why he had 12 disciples, each one of the Zodiac signs. For example, Judas is Scorpio. I'll give you another one. Um, Simon Peter. Okay, Simon Peter. Um, his name was Simon. He was given the name Peter. But why Peter? You know, my name is Micah. Some people call me Micah. Some people call me Mike. Some people call me Mickey, whatever. There's nicknames that make sense. Jonathan, John, Thomas, Tommy. There's nicknames that make sense. Um, but it doesn't make sense to go from Simon Peter unless you know astrology. Now, Peter, Simon was a fisherman. So what is this fisherman sign? That's Pisces, the two fish. And the ruling planet of Pisces is Jupiter or Jew Peter. 
So they're just plays on words. So each one of these zodiac signs, okay, each one of these zodiac signs uh, end up representing one of the 12 disciples. I'm not going to go into all of them right now, but I just wanted to give you two examples. So why he was betrayed with a kiss by Judas, we went over that. He's Scorpio, the betrayer. Why he was dead for three days, we went over that. Why is his birthday on December 25th? We went over that. 